Right, so now we've seen how to fade in and out content. We're going to start animating our content. So we're going to get some great looking stuff moving all over the place here. So I'm going to quickly go back to my green circle. There we go. And we'll add the CSS back in. So width of 150 pixels, height of 150 pixels, border radius 50%, and background color green. There we go. So let's animate this circle. First off, once again, to make sure that it's completely in your head, can you set up a function that does something, I don't care what, when the circle is clicked. Go for it. All right, you should have had a string and then our selector for the circle. So hash circle and then click. And then we want to add a function with parentheses and then I'll just do a quick test with alert, something like that. All right, there we go. So we're all connected up nicely. So how does the jQuery animate function work? Well, it's much like you would expect, but there's a couple of slight complications to it. So first off, let's say we want to use this as our selector just to remind ourselves that it exists. And of course, if we click on the circle, then this is gonna be the circle. And if we want to animate it, first bit's easy enough. We use the animate function. And then we have to put some properties in. First off are the CSS properties that we want it to have at the end of the animation. So let's say we want to increase its width to 400 pixels gradually as the process of an animation then what we would do is we'd give the width and we'd then state in quotes what we wanted that to be. So 400 pixels, like that. However, because this could be one of a number of different CSS properties, and we could have several here in one go, as we will do in a minute, we need this to be an array. And to define it as an array, we put it in curly brackets like that. So that doesn't mean that this is a function or anything. It means that this is one of potentially many CSS instructions that we could put in there. And in a minute, we'll see how we can add other ones as well. And then the other property that we need to give the animate function is the amount of time that we want it to take the animation. So it's in milliseconds. So let's go for something like 2000 milliseconds, which would be two seconds. All right. So that will increase the width to 400 over 202 seconds. Let's take a look. There it goes. Nice. Notice because we've set the border radius to 50%, it's still not quite circular as such, but the border is at least all the way around. It doesn't become a rounded rectangle. All right, so let's have some real fun. What if we wanted to change some more CSS properties at the same time? Well. Let's say we wanted to change the height to 400 pixels as well. We'd put a comma in there, and then we'd specify that we want the height to be, and in quotes, whatever we want it to be. So again, 400 pixels. Let's have a look at that. There we go. So now it grows in both width and height. Now, if we add many more of these, it's going to get a bit confusing having them all on the same line running on after each other. So the general convention is to put our different attributes on different lines like that. And that's just a lot easier to read. We can see the different attributes that we're changing and add them or remove them very quickly as necessary. So remember, you always need a comma in front of them. Let's say we wanted to move it around a little bit as well. So we'll change the margins. Now, we use the JavaScript names for CSS properties here, not the CSS names. So instead of margin dash left, we use margin and then left with a capital L. 
they're pretty easy to translate. Just whenever you see a, a hyphen or a dash, take it away and then capitalize the word after it. So margin left, let's change that to 100 pixels. And let's add in margin top of 100 pixels as well. All right, let's take a look. There we go. So it's moving and growing at the same time. All right, so feel free to mess around with that and change the animations as you wish. One final little challenge for you is can you figure out a way to, let's say, change the background color of this circle to red the moment the animation completes? Go for it. All right, did you figure that one out? Not super easy. We can add a callback function in the animate function just as we have done with fading in and out. So we add it as an extra property in the function call and then function and parentheses and then our curly brackets to contain whatever code we want to happen when the animation is complete. And the thing that we want to do is to set the background of this thing to red. So let's select it again using this. And we set the background to red using CSS and background color and red. Simple as that. Let's take a look. Wonderful. So hopefully you could imagine using that on your websites if you want to provide a bit of interactivity and allow things to move or change size when they're clicked on, then why not do it with a little bit of animation to make your website that bit more fun to use. Now talking of fun to use, one huge innovation in recent years on the web is the creation of web apps. And the primary differentiator of a web app is one where you can control and do a number of different things on the page without reloading the page or clicking on a link to go on a new page. And the vast majority of that happens using a technology called Ajax. And that's what we're going to look at in the next video.